There may be up to 9,000 species of earthworms on our planet, but less than 10 of them are any good at composting. Why are some worms just cut out for the job and others aren't? We're going to cover that on today's episode of Coffee and Compost. My name is Steve Churchill, and this is the Urban Worm Company. What makes composting worms so special? A worm is a worm, right? Well, not all worms are the same. They can be grouped into three major categories, anisic, endogeic, and epigeic. Worms like night crawlers inhabit the deepest layers of our soil. This is the anisic category of earthworms. Anisic is Greek for out of the earth. Even though these worms burrow vertically in the soil, sometimes as deep as six to nine feet, they come to the surface to consume organic matter, sometimes literally dragging it down into their deep burrows. Most of the world's earthworms are anisic. They tend to be large, muscular, and dark colored. Other worms burrow horizontally within the topsoil. These worms are endogeic, which is Greek for in the soil. These worms are a little less muscular than anisic worms and have a lighter coloring. Then there are the composters, which are known as epigeic, which is Greek for on the earth. These worms live above the soil surface in the litter layer or the organic horizon of the soil. By nature, they live in and process organic debris like leaves and dead plant matter. As grasses, leaves, and other plant tissue dies and falls to the earth, they create a layer of duff that breaks down into humus and soil. In the forest, most of the forest floor is one giant composting system. New vegetation is added throughout the seasons, which starts decomposing, slowly turning into humus, and incorporating itself into soils. Epigeic worms are there to work alongside microbes and other organisms to break down all of this organic matter. In a worm bin, we're simply taking advantage of what worms do in nature and mimicking what happens on the forest floor or any other natural environment where there's a layer of decaying organic matter on the surface. Remember, the Greek root word Words for epigeic are on the earth. So these worms live above the soil, but just underneath that layer of duff. When you understand this, you also understand that epigeic worms would be no good to throw in your garden unless your soil is the loosest organic matter rich soil out there. In that case, it's likely got worms in it anyway. Epigeic worms will not help aerate your soil and will become expensive bird food. These worms are darker colored like anisic worms, but not muscular enough to burrow into our topsoil. The most common epigeic worm is the red wiggler, known by its Latin name, Isenia fetida. Other epigeic worms are African nightcrawlers, Indian blues, and European nightcrawlers. Don't let the name nightcrawler fool you though. These worms are not soil dwellers like anisic worms. They live in that loose layer of organic matter and do a heck of a job turning it into humus. We sell epigeic worms only here at the Urban Worm Company and sell red wigglers both in a mix combined with a certain amount of Indian blues mixed in. They do a great job of processing organic waste. For those of you looking for pure stock, we also sell a slightly more expensive pure red wiggler stock. And there are links to these products below. I hope this was helpful. If so, please hit that like button, subscribe to this channel, hit that little bell to be alerted anytime we release something new, and I'll see you on the next video.